Let's continue our look at Vex and Vops by going over the clamp function as well as the five fit functions. So this project file will be available on Patreon as is with all of the previous ones. So we'll just have all of them in the same file so you can reference everything just in there, just moving around and taking a look at the different sections. So let's drop down a grid and then we'll need our attribute wrangle. So let's look at the clamp function first so we can understand how it works in conjunction with the fit functions. So let's take our position. So we'll do at p dot x, we'll take our x position and let's clamp this from, right now it's from negative five to five. Let's clamp that from one, negative one to one. So we'll use the clamp function and then it takes three values. So our input value, so what we want to evaluate and then the range that we want to clamp it to. So at p dot x is what we're gonna evaluate and we're gonna make that clamped to negative one to one. And if I press control and enter now, you see that we have this positions of all of our points. Now on the X axis are gonna be clamped from negative one to one. And you can change that to, you know, whatever you want, but let's leave it at negative one to one for now. Let's go ahead and look at this in the point bop. We'll wire that up and let's take a look in here. Let's make sure we set our display flag. So with the clamp function in VOPS, we'll just drop down a clamp node and you can change the signature to whatever you want, but you don't need to. It's gonna automatically detect what you input. So we'll clamp this from with that to our position. And you see that we get something a little bit different than what we had before. And that's because all of these values are set from zero to one. So if we set this from negative five to five, and negative five to five, we get our grid back. And then if I want to change this from negative one to one, we get the same thing here. Now I wanna point out one other thing here with this is we can split out the different channels of the position. So if we do a vector to float, this is gonna take our position vector and then float value one is X, second is Y and the third is Z. So we can take that first position and pipe that into a clamp and make this go from negative one to one. And then we can take a float to vector. We can pipe in our resulting value from the clamp and then our two other positions. And let's just wire this into a switch as well. So we'll take our clamp there and then our clamp, our float to vector there and wire that into the position. And if I switch between the two, we get the same thing. But if I come and change this value here, we start to get something different. So I just want to show that you can do it that way as well. It's the same thing that's going on, but uh, just some extra steps there. And just you can use this to split out some things, which can be useful for other things inside Houdini. Well, let's go ahead and look at the fit functions now. So let's come back to our wrangle here. I'm gonna make a copy of this. And let's look at the, the fit function first. You just, I'm gonna drag it over here. So let's take our X position and let's use the fit function. So there is five different fit functions, actually. There's fit, there's fit one, fit one zero, fit one one, and E fit. And all of the fit functions except for eFit will clamp your values within your function. So we'll explain that visually later, but let's just understand that that's something that happens for now. So with the fit function, the just regular fit here, we it's gonna take a few different values. So we're gonna need an input value, which is gonna be our p.x in this case. We're gonna have to specify the range that it starts with, which is negative five to five in this case. And then we're gonna specify what range we want to fit it to, which will be negative one to one. So let's do at p dot x is, so for that's our, what we're evaluating. And then our input range is negative five to five. And then the range we wanna change it to is negative one to one. And control and enter. And now you see that we have fit all of those values from negative one to one. 
So the Fit01 is going to be the same sort of uh, thing, except for it's going to expect a value from 0 to 1 to start off with. So let's go ahead and make this grid a 1 by 1 grid, and then let's make it be centered over by 0.5 so that all of our x values fall within 0 to 1. And let's go ahead and get rid of this. So let's take our fit 01. And as I said, it takes a value from 0 to 1 to start off with. So let's take our fit 01 and we're going to specify what we want to work over. So our x position. And then we want to fit that from negative 1 to 1. And if I press Control and Enter now, we now have that being fit from negative 1 to 1 instead of 1 or 0 to 1. Now, the fit 1, 0 is going to take the exact same thing. It's going to take a 0 to 1 value, or in this case, it's going to flip that. So it's going to be a 1 to 0 value. So if I go ahead and just show you what I mean by that, we don't have to change anything except for the function, and I press Control and Enter. It's going to reverse our geometry. You can see that our front face is down there now. Now, you don't actually need to use the fit10 function. You can do the exact same thing with the fit01. All you need to do is change this input or the output range from negative one to one to one to negative one. And now we get the exact same thing that we have with our fit10 function. So just a little tip there. I don't think I've ever used the fit10 function, but uh, it's just doing the same thing. It's just kind of flipping the values. Now let's make another copy of this grid and our attribute wrangle. We need to take this grid and make this be within the values of negative 1 to 1 in order to use the fit 1, 1 function. So let's make this a 2 by 2 grid. And now we have everything within the, and the x coordinates within negative 1 to 1. So we can take this wrangle and do fit 1, 1. So as I said, the fit11 function takes a value in the range of negative 1 to 1, and then it shifts it to whatever we want. So at p dot x, and let's do negative 2 to 2. Control and enter, and now we have everything fit within negative 2 to 2. So that is all of the fit functions except for efit. So let's talk about that real quick. Let's take this grid and bring it over here. We're going to take this wrangle and let's, so this one is from negative five to five again. So the E fit, let's take our color. So let's create a color attribute. So at CD is equal to, and this is going to just kind of build on some of the things that we've been talking about. So, all right, we're going to take our color value and we're going to base that on the x position. So we'll do at, or we'll do, sorry, um, fit. We'll use fit first, and then we'll do e fit so we can kind of explain what's going on here. So we'll do fit, and we'll do at p dot x. So we're going to take our x position. We're going to fit that from negative 5 to, or from negative 5 to 5 to 0 to 1. And now we have a gradient from 0 to 1 along the x-axis here. So if I just make a copy of this, we can do an e fit, And we get the exact same thing. So the difference between the fit and the e fit functions is the fit function is going to clamp your values from 0 to 1. The e fit function will not. So if we change our input, from negative 2 to 2. Whoops, let's do it here. This is on our value here. So anything beyond the negative 2 is going to be 0. And anything beyond the 1 value is going to be 1. So you can see that our values are still from 0 to 1 with that. Or we're going to drop it to 0.5, you can see that it's going to be from 0 to 0.5. Now, if you do the same thing with the e fit, so let's set this from negative 2 to 2, and then from 0 to 0.5, we have 
kind of the same thing, except for it's being extrapolated past that. So we still have values in a ramp, but they're going past one or past our, our zero and they're going past our 0.5. So our cd.r, g, and b, there it's a grayscale value, so they're all the same. But so our cd value is 0.875 all the way on this end. And then on this end, it is negative 0.375. So it's being extrapolated past that, which we probably don't want, especially with our color. So just be aware that the eFit function will not clamp your values off on the edges or on the edges of your range. They will extrapolate past that. So it can be useful for certain things, but there's other things that you're definitely wanna, going to want to have clamped to stay within the bounds that you set. So that is an overview of the VEX. Let's go ahead and look at our point VOP again. So we'll drop down another point VOP. Let's wire this up and not template it. Let's go ahead and dive in here. And if we take a look in here, we have, if we type in fit, we have two things. We have fit range and we have fit range unclamped. So we don't have the fit one, fit, fit a one, fit one zero, fit one one functions. We just have a fit. So we can take this, let's actually split this out. Or well, actually we can just wire this in. It's gonna be a 3D vector. Uh, and then we can wire this into our position. And you can see that we get the same thing that we had with the clamp because it's clamping it from zero to one. So let's set our source max from negative five in the x and z to five and now we have everything being fit within that range so let's go negative five negative five five and five and now we have the, our grid back to what, what we had before so we can again we can fit our x position from negative one to to one and we get the same thing that we had before now let's go ahead and take the color that we had before. Let's set this from, let's create another one of these just so since we already have the color created so that we can use it in the point vop there. We'll set this from, oops, negative one to one, or negative five to zero to one. Uh, and actually, now that I think about it, that's not what we want to do. Let's take just our point VOP here and let's take the E fit in this case. So our E fit is not called E fit in the point VOP, it's called fit range unclamped. So we're going to take our X position. So we're going to need to take this float to, or sorry, vector to float because we're going to need to split out the X. And we'll take the X, we'll wire that into our E fit. And this is going to go from negative five to five, and we want it to be zero to one. And let's just wire that into our CD, and we get the same thing that we had before. So this is going from zero to one because we're going from negative five to five. But again, if we change this from negative two to two, we get values that go beyond what we had before. So again, the E fit, and again, if I set this to negative or to 0.5, we get the same thing. But again, we have uh, the values that are not being clamped to the range that we're specifying. They are being extrapolated past that. So again, just important to remember that the E fit is going to keep things unclamped and the fit is going to keep things clamped. So you may want to use them in different scenarios or you may not care, kind of depends on what you're, what you're working with. Anyways, that is a look at the fit functions as well as the clamp function. Hopefully this helps you out. This is going to be very useful for layering things. You'll use fits a lot. Uh, clamps you may not use so much. Um, you may or may not, but the fits will definitely be used quite a bit. I use them all the time. And typically you're gonna use them within 
uh, within other functions. I guess I didn't do an example of that here, but you'll use a uh, fit within another function. So you'll combine them with things like the, the random functions and um, just do some things with that. So we'll look at some of that stuff here in the future, but that goes over the clamps and the fits. Hopefully that helped you out. There is more in this project file that has to do with VEX and point bops. So if you're interested in learning more about VEX and VOPS, then make sure to check out the other videos in the series, as well as the project files if you're interested in those. And I'll clean this up a little bit and kind of make it a little bit nicer so that it's a little bit easier to follow without the video. But anyways, that project file will be available in the Patreon link in the description. So grab that on there if you're interested. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.